If you're preparing for an IS coding interview, you've probably seen a lot of different questions, including build an app from scratch, explain a sync await, and even reverse a linked list. And it can feel overwhelming. Where are you even supposed to start? In this video, we'll break down the five main interview formats, what to expect in different companies, and most importantly, how to prioritize your preparation. All right, the first IS coding interview format is building a small app live. What does it look like? The interviewer usually gives you requirements. You open up Xcode, share your screen, and code an app from scratch explaining your thought process. Example questions here are create a simple to-do list app with add, delete, edit features, or something that involves networking, such as build a weather app using a public API. The interviewer might even give you a small mock-up of the interface that you need to code. What sort of skills are tested in this interview? First of all, it's SwiftUI and UIKit basics, and I would suggest using SwiftUI for this interview because it's the most modern approach to UI building, but it depends on the company. SwiftUI is increasingly common in small and mid-sized companies, startups, but enterprise teams still rely on UIKit. So it's worth being comfortable with both. Additionally, this interview format tests how well you organize your code, including usage of classic design patterns such as MVVM, Delegate, and solid principles in action. And of course, it tests your knowledge of common iOS APIs such as URL session, codable, and maybe even structured concurrency. How should you prepare for this interview format? I would suggest doing the obvious thing. Practice coding a simple app from scratch multiple times, timing yourself. It should take 30 to 60 minutes to complete. Most importantly, you need to come up with a blueprint of your app architecture and coding approach. For example, start with clarifying requirements and stating your tech stack. That would include SwiftUI, MVVM, URL session for network requests. Then you need to set up your project structure that would include creating folders for views, view models, services. It's really important to show good structure even in this time-constrained format. After that, you create your data model and build a stub UI to get something on screen. And finally, implement your data layer, meaning services, and connect them to your UI. By the way, I have a video called Build a Work Lock in Swift UI. Check it out to see my approach. Now, let's move on to the next interview type. Questions and code snippets covering various IS domains. What does it look like? The interviewer usually goes section by section through all iOS related topics and asks questions or gives simple code snippets that you need to solve right away. What topics are covered here? It is a really long list and depends on a company's tech stack, but I can give you a rough structure. First, Swift language and iOS fundamentals, app lifecycle, run loops, classes versus structures, generics, protocols, etc. Second, an important topic, memory management. That includes ARC, weak versus unowned, and reference cycles in closures. Third, UIKit or Swift UI basics. Fourth, async programming and concurrency, and that includes GCD, async await and structured concurrency, combine, maybe operation and operation queues. Next, data persistence. That includes working with user default, JSON and codable protocol, and core data and other caching strategies. Please remember that not all companies use core data, so it would be a great idea to do a research on target company's tech stack, so you would know what to expect. Next topic is networking, URL session configuration and caching, error handling and retry strategies. Seventh, architecture and system design, which is a huge topic. It can be touched here, but usually there is a separate system design interview to evaluate it. And the last one is testing, where you're expected to answer questions about unit testing, UI testing, dependency injection for mocking and stubbing. A few example questions. How closures can create retain cycles and how do you avoid them? 
Another one, how does async await differ from GCD? Or what are solid principles and how do you apply them in iOS? How to prepare for this type of interview? I would suggest revisiting topics that I just mentioned. Also, try googling top interview questions and answering them. By the way, if you want me to build a common iOS question list, comment down below. Cool, the next interview format is inspect and debug existing code. In this type of interview, you are given an existing project that intentionally contains bugs and logic errors. You need to debug the code base, find and fix the most critical issues first, and then give your suggestion how to improve this project even further. What is assessed here? Your debugging and code comprehension skills. How fast you can dive deep, find issues and make improvements. You can argue that this type of interview really resembles what happens in your first months at the company. So I would say it's a good test. Okay, let's talk about how to prepare for this type of interview. The first tip is practice reading unfamiliar code bases on GitHub. There are a lot of repositories there. Obviously, they don't contain any intentional mistakes, but it's still a good practice. You can take a look at app examples and also at library implementations such as Alarm Fire. The next tip is that you should know how to use Xcode tools such as print debugging and breakpoints. And the last tip is straightforward. Learn most common iOS problems and how to fix them. For example, retain cycles, concurrency issues, laggy scroll or table view performance, and network and database error handling. By the way, I have a few interesting example projects for the debugging interview, so if you're interested, book a mock interview on my website. I also plan to make an example solution video soon. Awesome, now let's talk about the next interview, which is a take-home project. The format is straightforward. Usually you're given two to three days to build a small app, often with API, persistence layer, and even testing. An example problem could be to create a movie browsing app that lists and filters results from a public API. Take-home tasks are less about the preparation and more about the execution. If you are at this stage of the interview process, what you can do to significantly improve your chances of getting hired is to ace this project. To do that, implement more than expected. Do a little extra. Write unit tests for your project, include UI tests and a good documentation. For example, a detailed README inside the project or even a separate file with documentation or even a presentation. Obviously, your take-home project would be compared to other projects and what you want to achieve is to make it so good they will feel they have to hire you. I would also suggest using modern technologies or the tech stack that the company uses. For example, SwiftUI, Async Await, etc. Take-home projects can be quite time-intensive, so if you decide to do one, aim to do it exceptionally well. If not, it's completely fine to use that time for something else that matter more. Another question is, can you use AI to build your take-home project? And the answer is yes, but you need to understand every line of code in your project. For some people, it actually might be simpler to write code themselves and then double check it with AI tools. But I honestly think we'll be seeing less take-home projects in the future because obviously I'd say 99% of people would be using AI to generate the whole project, including unit tests and documentation. It would be really difficult to assess someone's skills by looking at the generated code and asking questions. So I think this interview format will become less popular in the future, but right now you can still encounter it. Okay, cool. So the next interview type is algorithm coding interview. And this type of interview is really popular in big tech companies such as Meta, Google, and others. Typically, you'll get a lead code style problem, medium to hard difficulty, or even two problems in one interview. You'll need to solve them using Swift and explain your thought process. And don't forget to mention time and space complexity for each solution. Why do companies still do that? In big tech, 
engineers rarely use the standard iOS stack. They usually rely on internal frameworks built for massive scale. So instead of Swift UI, they use tools developed in-house. So even if these companies are hiring iOS engineers, they care more about general software engineering skills, such as algorithms, system design, because they consider mobile engineers to be software engineer generalists. You might end up working not only on iOS-related tasks, but also front-end, back-end, or even writing scripts in multiple languages. This is why they ask algorithm problems in interviews. I don't want to go too much into details here, because there is already a ton of content for algorithm interview preparation, but generally I'd say solving 75 lead code problems is the minimum bar, though it's better to aim for 150 problems. Just remember, it's not about the number. Focus on learning the patterns, not just memorizing answers. When practicing on lead code, you'll notice many solutions in C++ and Java. A key part of your prep is learning how to implement common data structures such as heaps and trees in Swift, because standard library doesn't provide them out of the box. Okay, we've covered the five formats, so how do you prioritize your preparation? It completely depends on who you're interviewing with. Let me break it down into three main company types. First, if you're targeting big tech companies such as Google or Meta, your main focus should be algorithms. This is your number one non-negotiable priority. Next, questions and answers on iOS fundamentals. And third priority is coding a small app. You still need to prove that you can actually build apps in Swift. For startups and mid-size companies, flip that priority. You need to be a practical iOS expert, and that means Coding an app from scratch is your main priority. Can you ship features fast enough? Next is Q&A interview, deep knowledge of Swift, memory management, and concurrency. And the last priority for you is the take-home project. This is very common here, so be ready to do it. Next, what I call legacy companies. That might be big finance companies, e-commerce, or older tech companies. They often have a huge established UI kit code base. So here you want to prioritize Q&A interview, especially go deep into UI kit and Objective C interoperability. Second priority is the debugging interview because it's super important for maintaining their large legacy code bases. And the last one is coding an app from scratch. Use either Swift UI or UIKit here. The good news is that a lot of this knowledge overlaps. For example, mastering async await can help you in almost every one of these formats. So pick your target, prioritize your prep, and you'll be in great shape. All right, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and see you in the next one.